Let me know when. We are good to go, sir. Namaskar. Right. Namaskar. My name is Ambassador Dr. Deepak Vora. I'm a special advisor to the Prime Minister in three African countries. And I'm also a friend of RoboChamps. I've seen the outstanding work that they have been doing over the years. I've just returned after several weeks in the United States. The world most technically advanced country. Most important lessons are moving and shaking America. In, in the third decade of the 21st, his image was that of a poor, starving country overpopulated, fractious, backward, barely able to feed its growing population. And then in the 1990s, people across the world began to hear of a new city called Bangalore, which is today Bengaluru. Because by 1990, the personal computer had become an integral part of our lives and the smartphone was beginning to make its presence felt. This was the era when technology giants flexed their muscles and signaled that an irresistible force more powerful than any military had arrived. It was called information technology. Microsoft came into our lives and Apple and Google and Facebook and Amazon. And suddenly the world was much smaller than it had ever been. Then came the global scare of the Y2K bug and Indians were in great demand to save our digital world. We did save it. India became synonymous with programming and coding. There is this apocryphal story of the young entrepreneur in America who was promised a huge amount of venture capital for his startup. Then he signed his name, Murphy. Oh no, said the board, sorry, we cannot invest. We thought your name was Murthy. I'm delighted that RoboChamps is creating a new world record in coding. What does the post-COVID economy look like? It's an important question today. The type of infrastructure that will be welcomed post-virus is soft infrastructure. Institutions that rely on human capital and services, including healthcare, financial systems, education systems, law enforcement, and government services de delivered direct to the public. All these rely on contact, now remote contact. All are politically and culturally sensitive. China knows nothing about them. India does. So as we move to a contactless virtual world, coding acquires even greater significance. According to expert assessment, the job market for software developers and computing programmers is set to grow 21, 22, 25% in the next 10 years. It is a booming industry and there has never been a better time to teach our children how to code. And learning how to code can be fun and exciting. I wish I could do it at my age. Code fuels our world's technology from microprocessors in everyday items like refrigerators and water heaters to sophisticated programs that operate our cars and buildings. Learning to code has become an essential element of a child's education. As technology becomes more prevalent in our lives, code is revolutionizing every aspect of today's world. When I was in the United States, I sat in a car that did not have a driver. I saw robot-assisted surgery. I observed the social media and so much more. Knowledge of coding at a young age is a great opportunity for kids and teens to develop their problem-solving and critical thinking skills. RoboChamps, congratulations. You are doing the right thing in the right place at the right time with an online coding class for 15,000 participants. Teaching coding to our school students is also our national priority and imperative. The Prime Minister is very keen. My best wishes to all those taking part in this effort. You are destined to succeed. I wish you good luck.